Welcome to Bora Motors. Today we're going to be discussing some tips and tricks for the eMove Touring. So now we're going to talk about P settings. These are located inside your LCD display finger throttle and um, the way you get to them is by holding down your power and your mode button for a few seconds. We're going to start with the minimum voltage and that's going to be on P1. To get there we hold down those power and mode buttons and then click mode to cycle through our different P options. So at P1, you'll see it's set to 41.5. This is your minimum voltage before the scooter will shut the battery off. Having P1 set to 41.5 ensures that the battery can last longer and lessens the likelihood of degradation. So now for P2, to cycle through all your different options, you're gonna click mode. And when you've gotten to the section you'd like to change, you click the power button. Now you, what you'll see here is that P2 is set to 17. This is wrong. What you're gonna to wanna to do is set this to 15. 15 is what it should be set to. 17 is the number you'd expect to see on a cruiser. So when you look at your display here, you might notice the letters PAS. This indicates that your kickstart setting is turned on. The kickstart setting basically requires you to kick your scooter off before the motor is engaged. When you turn that off, you won't have to kickstart anything and you'll just have to pull down on the throttle. Now to find your kickstart setting, you'll go into your P settings and go to P5. The P5 is set to 1 right now, which means that the kickstart is on. To change that, you press the power button and then you press it again, and then that goes from 1 to 0. To change it back to 1, you'll hit mode. One other P setting that a lot of people change when they get their tourings is P9. So we're gonna go to our P settings and click mode until we get to P9. And this is our electronic braking system. When P9 is set to two, that means the electronic braking is gonna be very strong. We can change that by pressing the power button twice to zero. And by putting the electronic braking at zero, that means that it's completely off. A lot of people like to have it in the middle or with electronic braking on completely at two and this is more of a preference thing. So you can set it to however you like and take it for a ride and change it based on your preference. If you'd like to learn more in depth about this display, click the video linked above. So one thing we recommend for after a while of riding your touring is to check the screws. Over time, some might become loose because of the rattling of just riding your scooter around. It's a natural thing that every scooter rider has to encounter at some point. And what many people do is they'll start applying Loctite to these certain screws. Today, we're using blue Loctite. We recommend that you do the same. If you use red Loctite, those screws will be more in place, but it'll take heavy machinery to unscrew them later on. We recommend putting Loctite on all of these screws back here along the rear chassis. The four screws that hold the stem and folding mechanism in place are also fine to put Loctite on. So we recommend putting Loctite along the screws on your rear fender, as well as the screws on your front fender. All you do when you're applying the Loctite is have it on top of your threads, glide the Loctite against the top like so, and just have a thin line of Loctite on top like this. The main way that you can avoid ever having to worry about battery degradation is making sure that you regularly charge your battery and make sure that you're not going through puddles or exposing it to an excessive force of water. The battery for the eMove Touring is a 48 volt battery which takes 54.6 volts of charge when you're charging it. Always make sure that you charge your eMove Touring with an eMove Touring charger. One way to check this is by going to the back of it and making sure that the output voltage says 54.6 volts. So now we're going to be talking about removing the battery and replacing it with a new one. This is a task that not many of you are ever going to have to encounter, however for the few of you that will need to do this, this is for you. Unscrew the four screws holding the folding mechanism base to the footboard. The stem can be laid to the side for now. Unscrew these four screws on the bottom of the scooter and these four screws on the front of the scooter. You can now pull this front plastic cover off. On each side of the scooter, unscrew the three screws holding the plastic covers on. Place the covers to the side once disconnected. With everything now loose and open, you can pull the controller out. I find that grasping and pulling at the black metal frame around it helps move everything out smoothly. When you open up your eMove Touring, you're gonna to notice this thing here. This is your main controller, and so this is your brain for the scooter. What we recommend is before taking your battery out, the first thing you should check is that all of these connectors here are actually connected to the ports that they're supposed to be. For this, just disconnect 
and reconnect all of the cords. Try out your throttle, try out your brakes, and see if the problem was solved by doing that. So if that didn't solve your problem, then it's probably time to move forward to removing that battery. Take a look inside the cavity and see that there are a few obstacles between you and your battery. You will need to remove the battery, so these wires will need to be disconnected. Start disconnecting the wires, starting with the larger red and yellow connectors. Then disconnect this specific connector that goes to the side lights. Disconnect these two thicker cords on the side with the power button. Pull them through to the plastic cover on the other side. Make sure to take a photo of each connector before disconnecting them. You will use these photos later when reconnecting all the wires. Now that the cavity is cleared, you can pull the battery out. Grip it by the wires coming out of the front and start pulling. There's a line of tape along the bottom holding it in place, so you may have some resistance. If it becomes stuck or too difficult to pull out, get a ruler or something long and thin to try and dislodge the battery from the tape's grip. We can now start putting everything back together. First, we slide the battery in. Position the brake line to the side of the Earlier, Using the photos you took earlier, reconnect all of the connectors. Once the cords are all connected, you can push them back towards the battery. Now take the black metal frame from earlier and place it over these wires and the controller. Make sure that your controller placement looks the same as mine here and that the frame is oriented correctly with the side closer to the screw slots facing in. Once everything is pushed in and looks good, you can start screwing everything back in. Start with the four screws on the bottom. Line them up with the black frame inside the cavity. Only screw them in halfway for now. Next we screw in the four screws that keep the front cover on. Then we move to the top four screws which will require putting the fooling mechanism base back on. Once all four screws are secure, finish tightening the four on the bottom. Go to the side plastic covers and make sure the wiring is flush with the contours of the pieces. Screw each side back in with three screws for each. After you've secured both side deck covers, your touring is good to go. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Comment below and tell us what kind of content you'd like to see in future videos. And as always, make sure to hit subscribe and that bell, and we'll see you next time.